Let's talk about the third-party loophole. This is a loophole that desperately needs to be closed. When the Constitution was made and the amendments tacked onto it, the Bill of Rights in particular gives you a lot of rights that are very important in modern society, such as the right against unlawful search and seizure, the right to due process of law, the absolute right to freedom of speech and freedom to own a gun and bear that gun. And it is true that the Constitution technically only bars the government from putting restrictions on you and taking unlawful actions against you in this manner. The problem is that now corporations are so huge and encompass so much of our lives that corporations effectively are arms of the government. And those corporations can be commandeered by the government to perform actions on the government's behalf that the government can't do themselves. This is the third party loophole. For example, if you send and receive email through Gmail, just as an example, it could be any email provider. If you send and receive email through Gmail and the police decide that they want to dig through your email, they can just ask Google, can we look through this person's email and Google as the owner of your email data because it's on their property, it's on their servers, so the data is theirs, can just give it over without a warrant, without you getting any due process, without you knowing anything about your data being taken. If that data was in your house, stuffed in a safe, they would not be able to get to that data. If that data was in your house and not in a safe, they would not legally be able to obtain that data without a search warrant. A search warrant authorized by a judge and requiring justification to be given for issuing that warrant. But with Google or any other third party that isn't you, the government can show up and say, we want to see Joe Schmo's email. And Google and just be like, here, here, t- take it, take it. Because The email, even though it's your email, isn't actually yours. Technically, it's Google's. Google can do whatever it wants with it. But the problem is that because so much of our stuff in the digital world, where all the commerce takes place now, where all the communication takes place now, basically everything is owned by a private corporation that isn't you, that has the right to hand over your data without your permission, without respecting your rights to due process of law, and then that corporation has the right to hand over your data to the government. Since it's technically theirs, it's technically not yours. What we need is to declare data that you create or data that is about you to be owned by you. If it's with a third party, that third party cannot hand it over to the government. Even if the government obtains a warrant without you getting notice, the warrant must be served on you not the third party, and you should be able to challenge that. But without a warrant, they should have to ask permission from you, and any evidence gathered from you should not be usable in court against you, because you did not give permission. Now, if they get a search warrant, it might be different, but a search warrant is a formal procedure that requires that they justify what they are doing to a judge and get permission. It's a formal procedure that prevents abuses of your rights. And that procedure can conveniently be bypassed nowadays. Data about you should be owned by you. Data about you and other people combined should be collectively owned by you and the other people the data is about. You should have a say in who can retain that data, where that data can go. Anybody who retains data about you or data that you create that you revoke access to should be required to remove that data. Now, obviously, there would need to be some exceptions. I haven't actually thought out all of the exceptions that would need to be laid out, but there are some free speech and public interest exceptions that would need to be dropped. However, handing over data about you or created by you, such as your emails on Gmail, to the government without a warrant is definitely one of those situations that should be prohibited by law. 
the third party, the corporation, is effectively acting in the government's interests and therefore as the government and should be subject to the same restrictions. It's a little bit different if a news story comes out about something. That's more of a free speech thing. That's not the government. And perhaps the people who do the news, if they're publishing news stories, that's one thing. But if those people get the data from Google without any kind of formal process, without your permission, and then they hand that data over to the government, again, it's this transference to the government where the rights to your data and data about you should apply. The only exceptions should be just like any other constitutional conflict where your rights will be violated by the government's rules or by the government's actions. The only permissible situation should be narrowly tailored to cater to the government's interest while minimizing the impact to your rights. As it stands now, the government can basically just ask third parties for stuff all day long. Think about Snowden, and the NSA, the PRISM program. Huge companies, Google, Yahoo, Facebook, you name it, were required by the NSA to put in stuff that captured all of this information from these companies in real time and siphoned it off to the National Security Agency silently. They didn't tell anyone about it. The only way we found out is one guy who had a real major problem with it and is arguably a true American hero for revealing the illegal, unconstitutional collection of data by the government. And he's been exiled to Russia for his service to the country. Um, also, this video probably has made me ineligible for any kind of government clearance. That, that, that's fun. Uh, hey guys, if I ever get a government clearance, which I don't know why I would, but if I ever did, um, I'm not Edward Snowden, so you don't have much to worry about. You can support what the guy did and not be the guy who would do it. Another thing that needs to go and is kind of related are national security letters. The thing where they can go in and take stuff and the company is gagged from being able to say anything about them having gone in and taking this stuff. This is clearly not allowed. National security letters, gag orders for searches, are clearly blatantly unconstitutional. I do not care what the courts have decided up to this point on the subject. It is unconstitutional. A national security letter violates your First Amendment right to free speech. It, it violates the company and its collective employees' First Amendment right to free speech as well. Because you can't talk about it or you can go to prison. That, that's a little bit of a problem. That's a violation of the First Amendment. It's like a search warrant, except, you know, it's not really a search warrant. It's just, here, here's a letter. We're, we, we're taking this information from you, and you can't talk about it. Which necessarily, and you can't even talk to a lawyer about it. Which necessarily requires that you can't say anything to anyone that could help you. You can't challenge it because you can't speak of it. It is, it is the Voldemort of search warrants. And it's clearly, blatantly unconstitutional. It violates your right to due process. It violates the First Amendment. National security letters have to go. Hell, FISA courts have to go. Why is there a separate court for fast-tracking warrants in the first place? Warrants should go in front of the same judges in the normal court system. There shouldn't be a special rubber-stamping court for certain types of government warrants. End of story. So the problem is when you combine these fast track warrants, these, you know, Voldemort letters and the third party loophole where if it's owned by Google, technically, and you have no rights to it because of that, they can just hand over all your crap. Everything in the country was set up with the idea that if you owned something, it was your physical effects, your papers. The digital equivalent of your papers is your email, your bank accounts. Oh, don't get me started, the Bank Secrecy Act. All that bank crap, that money laundering crap, that's gotta go too. I mean, I could go off on so many of these libertarian rants, but I need to end it here because it's starting to get a little ridiculous. The bottom line is that you have the right to be secure in your papers and effects and property. You have that right. 
you have that right and you have the right to have it not taken away from you without due process of law. You have the right to talk about anything that you want to in an unlimited capacity because the First Amendment says you do. But that's not the way things are working out today. And third parties being able to hijack everything, it's just, it is the nightmare scenario. It is the dystopian outcome. It is bad, bad news. And we have to do something about it. Third parties can't be allowed to continue to just hand stuff over to the government with really no consequences at all. They don't just have the right to hand it over to the government. They can also hand it over to anybody else that they choose to. You use Gmail, Google could just hand all your emails off to someone else. And you know what? Oh, as long as we put a clause in the terms and conditions, all oh, that's totally okay. No, no. Data made by you or about you should be owned by you and should be under your control. One last thought before I close this video. Part of that data ownership should also be the implication that if you own the data, you must also own the means to use that data. You must also have access to the ability to, at a minimum, read that data in a usable format. So the reason I'm bringing this up is that if we're talking about setting up a right, a new established right that information that you create, it, it, even just ignoring information about you, information you create is owned by you, period. Even if it's stored at a third party. And it should be controlled by you and you should have the rights over it regardless of the fact that someone else physically possesses that data. If we're going to discuss that, we need to discuss ownership of the data and ability to use it. It is crucial that if you own data that you be able to work with that data. My classic example is how all software now is headed towards subscription-based models. I find these to be highly immoral, unconscionable ways of doing things. I don't like subscription software. I don't like software activation. I will very happily, if I pay for a subscription to a piece of software, I will pirate it anyway and crack it and remove the activation. In the case of, for example, when I had the Adobe Suite stuff going on, I, if you get a cracked copy of the Adobe Suite, if you install the crack that detaches all of the checks for your account, it turns out Adobe software was checking in so many places in the code flow to see if you still had a valid account, if you still had a valid token or whatever, a license, that it was actually lowering the performance of the software in a very measurable way. And the people behind these cracks figured out that if they cracked their software, not only did they not have to deal with product activation, which I find highly immoral, but also the software ran better. It was more stable. It was faster. It just did things better. So yes, the reason that I'll hold on to a cracked copy of a subscription software is that if Adobe revoked my subscription, or my example, if I ran out of money and I couldn't pay for the subscription anymore, I'd lose access to the software. Now, let's say I have a portfolio in Adobe Illustrator format. You can really only open that properly, fully, in Adobe Illustrator. If you do not have access to a working copy of Adobe Illustrator, say because your subscription ran out, or because Adobe decided that your politics were unacceptable and they revoked your account, then you lose the access to your portfolio. So even though you have the data in your hand, you no longer own the means to use your own data. And that's why data ownership basically needs to be locked to the person who creates it and needs to be set up so that the government can't do anything against it, corporations can't do anything against it, it needs to be protected. And you need to have the right to access your own data. And if that means that if they give you a piece of software that they can't lock you into a subscription, you know, I'm, I'm even fine with them revoking, you know, right access, for example. As long as you can export it to a usable universal format, that's fine. As long as you can dump it out to a PDF, SVG, whatever, to some other format so you can migrate your data, that would be fine too. I, I don't expect you, I don't expect 
the law to force Adobe to not dump subscription software on us, but I do expect the law to force Adobe to let us read and export our Illustrator portfolio in this example, or our InDesign portfolio, or, or our Photoshop work to another format so that it can be used in an alternative program, or at a minimum just looked at. Because without an Illustrator, you can't do anything. And yes, you can argue that, well, you should have exported it while you had the program. Well, that's not always an option, and that may not have your latest changes, and so on and so forth. Data should be owned by you. I've talked for way too long on this, and I think you get the point. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Like, comment, subscribe, look at the bottom, and there are support links where you can give me all kinds of cash money for my routing opinions on the internet. Thanks for watching and take care. Have a wonderful day. If my takes get any hotter, I may become an otter. Thing your rights to due process of law, you motherfucker. <laughs>